So welcome back to uh, the introduction to Capella course. Uh, the next lesson we're going to have today is on logical architecture and basically what the logical architecture is. Now logical architecture is really part of defining the solution when it comes to innovation. So but defining the solution is part of the aspect of it. So as we're going through this Arcadia methodology, uh, we want to define the solution, which is really about understanding the, the, the understanding the domain uh, of the of the problem. And in this case, with the innovation matrix, it's understanding you know how I would actually go about solving it, and it introduces the idea of the technologies. Uh, the this is the first part of basically getting into the solutioning of of the problem, how I would actually solve. Uh, this uh, this issue of basically a solar charger and just a reminder again this is what we're designing and we're going through the process of designing uh, with this so during this logical architecture you basically start to see you, you're going to work with the logical architecture blank diagram as the key diagram and with this diagram you start to pick uh, abstract components that you basically want to put, that you're considering to be used in in the solution um, you can do this logical architecture multiple different times with possibly different solutions. So the idea could be is that this could be how you could sketch out some possibilities of how you might want to build it. Uh, you basically are going to put components onto this diagram. Uh, and they're just going to be simple boxes, but they're going to represent things that will probably be ways to solve the problem. Uh, you'll become familiar of how to then map functions to the components. Uh, you'll see that the capability uh, could deliver is now being delivered through a functional chain at this with these components in mind so basically the system functional chain now has become a logical functional chain you'll you'll see how the logical architecture can be annotated with possible components as you're starting to investigate what you how you could possibly implement this and it's also a, a stepping off point for you might actually start building something with prototypes uh, maybe not the exact thing you're going to build but you might start doing some type of prototype development. So I'm going to switch now over to the demonstration and kind of show you some of these capabilities with uh, the actual tool. So I'm going to now go into the logical architecture tab here of the product and take a look at what we've built up. Now the first one I'm going to look at is basically a, a diagram that doesn't have any of the functions in it. Now what I've done here is I've kind of simplified the diagram. I've deselected, uh, I've selected an option where I'm not showing my functions, but this is really where I started. I started by bringing over the actors that I had in the previous section, and we'll show you later with uh, more details how these actors get populated in this model, but you notice that they're the same names that we had in the system analysis. I'm now representing trail power itself, again, as a whole system, and I've shaded it with a lighter color white background so that I could show that it has a boundary, but then I'm actually making the system up now with components. Now, this is really where my design background uh, comes into play as I start realizing, oh, well, I need to, to build this out with things that basically would be needed to generate solar power. So I'm thinking about, okay, I'll need a solar panel, and I'll need some type of charger, I'll need some type of light system, I need some type of boost system in a battery. So it was really investigating what I needed to get this that I started coming up with these type of components. And then but I want to make sure that I have a, a complete view of the whole thing with the function. So I've got to actually work at delivering the functions through the system. So I started kind of with uh, looking at the charge part of it. And so I see here that the sun is going to produce light. I'm going to convert light to power. I'm going to charge a storage device, which is some type of battery that's in here. And then I'm going to boost the voltage up so that the USB device can be charged with it. That's kind of the charge functional chain, and you can see that functional chain going through it. The charge and the generate power one. Uh, then the next one is I want to connect and disconnect. So I show here the user, and basically I want to be able to connect the system up. So this is the connect USB with the blue flow and the disconnect USB uh, device through the, the the flow here. Now, the interesting thing is why I have connect and disconnect is that you need you just can't have things, uh, you have to think about how the user is going to interop with, uh, interoperate uh, with the device or how to interact with the device. And so connecting and disconnecting is a common thing. So you want to make sure that you address that functionality with it. Uh, so for instance, when you're plugging in a cable or you're providing a cable for someone to use, you got to have some stability uh, in the device uh, inside the charger so that it's not just like slipping around or something would break. So Connecting and disconnecting, believe it or not, is a pretty important part of the problem. 
Next is I want to monitor remotely. So now I'm showing basically how I'm going to use some type of device that's going to monitor the, the solar panel, the charger, and the battery level and give that information back to the developer. And that's going to be using some type of telemetry system. And then I want to provide 24-hour visibility. So I want to basically have some way of taking the power that's coming from uh, the batteries and from the boost system here and, and basically use that to power some lighting that basically uh, can be find the charger at night. So I want to have that type of capability for it too. Now, it's during this phase, and I'll just show a more you know superset view of all the things. It's during this phase that I start thinking about, well, how am I going to build this system? And that's where I want to go and annotate the design with some information. So here I have some options and I basically saved a search for what I could look at. And when I did that search, I saved it. And I just by clicking on that link, it opens up the, the link to what I had. So I can go over and take a look at that. Um, then I'm going to basically, I got some more uh, things I've saved here. So I'm going to just put that window over here to the side. And here's some ones that I thought looked really promising. So I'm going to open that up. And sure, here's the uh, the link, and, and this is actually the part that I ended up using, this this little device, this $299 device that helps convert the uh, battery voltages uh, that you get from a, a typical lithium-ion battery and converts that into a, a USB power. Uh, I found some other ones uh, that different quantities for the device. So here's like $13, but I'm getting it for, I'm getting uh, 10 of those, it looks like here, uh, where's that says. So you know, in, in that one shipment. So definitely various options that you can use to basically get this, um, that you can use to basically document what your your thoughts are. Uh, likewise, I can go over here to the solar panel and see I have the same thing for the solar panel. I, I found some uh, there from a Banggood site. I can actually go and I saved one from an Amazon site. So I can start capturing information about what I might use for the different solar panels to build the system out of. And then, you know, eventually that led to the actual locating of, of components like this that I could start using essentially in prototypes. So this, this is a simple little solar panel here that I've brought together. Uh, and then here, some of the parts, some other additional parts uh, that basically would start shaping out the design. So anyway, back uh, to this uh, view. So we'll go back to the, the model. So that's Basically, what the, the goal is here is to realize the functional chains that were created at the system level, and now they're basically being realized in the logical level. So I'll go back and just take a we'll take a little pick, uh, peek at what we were what we started with with the system architecture. So here's kind of the system architecture view, and and now you're seeing the corresponding logical architecture view uh, over here. So this is what we're at now and you can see that I started dividing it up into components and parts from it and this is what we had before we, we basically were just saying the trail power is kind of a black box you can still see here's the trail power device and as we went through the transitioning from system analysis to the logical architecture uh, we started populating you know and dividing up the the functionality so that I could deliver it with real components I mean I couldn't just say create electricity out of thin air, I actually have to figure out how to do that. And that's where this concept of understanding the domain is really important. Um, but typically with large companies, people that understand the problem and understand what the customer needs may not be the same people that understand the domain. And so that's the power of a tool like Capella is it helps bring those two audience together so that someone who's figuring out, well, this is what the problem needs to solve over over here and this is basically the means to solve that problem so switching back to my slides you saw then how we went from basically the components to how the, the functionality then is being delivered to the component you saw how i could annotate the the, the model with uh, information to help me locate parts and components for it and and start looking at possible options for choosing parts with that. And that's a powerful part of the problem uh, of the developing the solution is knowing what your options are. And then you start doing some thinking about an analysis of how the options can be connected together to basically deliver a solution. Uh, so you may actually start, you start thinking of the problem more like this then, where 
I have this domain problem that I could solve with all these different possible combinations. Well, and that's where you start getting together and you start looking at, well, what are the costs that it's going to take to deliver the product? Uh, what are some failure mod failure modes that I might want to avoid by having multiple batteries? Uh, maybe you can do a math model to estimate the storage needs that you have based on the power consumption you have. So this is really where engineering starts coming into play. And, you know, people that are like myself that are trained in that background, this is a lot of times where it becomes really fun and interesting. But at the same time, if I didn't have that good idea of what the problem was from the, from the system analysis, I wouldn't be able to do this as well because I would basically be not, I wouldn't have set the destination that I want to arrive at with my architecture. And then, when you also get in this mode, you can start getting into more details. There's other possibility capabilities with uh, with a uh, with a uh, Capella to basically to sketch out the the flow of scenarios. Um, in this particular case, I actually started developing prototypes when I had this type of view of the system. You can see here I had a triangular shaped one, and then I show here I have some other ones that are starting to build out with circuit boards and put together for it. So I started working on some of the uh, original prototypes even at this phase of the product. So so in summary, the logical architecture, you saw how the logical architecture uh, bl uh, uh, blank diagram will depict the abstract components and the functions of the solution. You became familiar with how the Capella depicts the components, uh, how it allocates the functions to the components, uh, how it delivers the capabilities uh, that were in the system functional chain now are becoming part of the capabilities in the logical functional chain. And you see how the logical architecture can be annotated with possible components. Now, this is really then, and this is the step off point to prototyping and evaluation. Okay. Thank you very much for listening to this session. Uh, next one will be the physical architecture, uh, and you'll see the more details on that. Thank you very much.